Hello, this is going to be my video on assessments for the USMLE Step 1 exam. First, I'd like to do an introduction by explaining what they are because some people don't even know what they are. Uh, if you go on forums or listen to medical students talk, they'll use a bunch of lingo and you have no idea what it is. But first off, you're going to hear uh, people talk about MBMEs. MBMEs are assessment exams made by the National Board of um, Medical Examiners and it's basically the people that make the real test. Uh, so you can buy these MBME exams uh, assessments on their website which is www.nbme.org. So there is also, or at least the two I use, uh, USMLE World uh, the same place where you buy your question bank, they also have self-assessments. And I believe they have packages where you can buy the question bank and it includes the assessments. So you can get those at www.usmleworld.com. That is the first thing I want to say. You should not be doing any assessments offline. This is the most important point in this video. People uh, are constantly doing it offline and checking the answers with who knows what because I don't know where they get their sources, but they have answer keys going around. Um, but in my opinion, you should not do any assessments offline. These are assessments. You should spend the money. It's very expensive. Well, not very expensive, but they could get quite expensive, what, $50, $60 each, but uh, you should pay for these assessments you should not do them offline. So that's going to be my first very important message in this video. Second, um, I want to say that assessments are very important. People tend to be very afraid of assessments like, oh, I don't want to take it, you know, an MBME yet because I don't want to see how I'm doing or I don't know. I don't know if I'm just made different, but MBMEs are very important and I was always very excited to take them because I wanted to see how I was doing. I wanted to see my progress uh, or if I was doing bad. Uh, so they're very important for that. You need to see how you're doing, how you're progressing, and if you're not progressing then you need to make changes in your studying uh, so that you can improve. Okay? So don't be afraid to take them. Be afraid of not taking them. Be afraid of showing up on exam day taking absolutely no MBMEs. Uh, like I said, it's something very important that you should do and uh, you shouldn't be showing up to test day without having at least one exam under your belt. No, not one. I'm sorry, I take that back. At least two or three uh, exams, assessments under your belt saying that you have a passing score. So don't be afraid to take them. Take them. Um, so I'm going to go through how I did them uh, in order. I always feel like I'm repeating myself, but I started studying for my exam. And the thing is, people ask me, they'll watch this video and be like, when did you start taking your exam? Because they haven't seen the other video. So I try to uh, repeat myself. Uh, so I took, I started studying for the exam January 24th, and I took my very first assessment April 23rd. Okay, um, I took it after watching the Kaplan videos. So I had also been doing the question bank for a couple of months because I started in February. And what I took was, I took a UWorld self-assessment, the first one. Uh, the UWorld self-assessments are, I want to say easier, although UWorld questions are not easier um, than the actual exam, but the problem is that some of the questions in the question bank, if you've been doing the question bank, some of the questions are repeated. The um, Some of the pictures that they put at the images are repeated images, so you have an idea of what they're asking you, and I, so I would say about 10% of the assessment is like that, and that makes your score, uh, it overshoots about 10 points. So on my first UWorld self-assessment, I got a 194. Uh, and I was happy with this because that was a passing score. Uh, but like I said, it overshoots 10 points. So I was at about 184 on my first assessment. 
Okay, so two weeks, exactly two weeks after that, I took NBME 5. I had seen, I think, a couple of weeks or one weeks of first aid when I took NBME 5. And I got a 194 again, the same exact score. I feel that I did improve, like I said, the uh, U-World self-assessments are, some of them are repeated, and so I felt that um, I had improved with my MBME 5 score, although at that moment, when I saw that two weeks went by and that my score did not improve, I was very, very sad. So um, I took that on May 7th, which is two weeks after my first one. So I took my third assessment on May 30th, which was when I had already completed my first round of first aid. And I took NBME 11, which was one of the new ones at that time, and I got a 210. So I was so happy with that score because I had improved tremendously uh, from my last NBME to this one. I had improved about what, 16 points, so in about three weeks. So I was very happy with that, and I took UWorld Self-Assessment 2 on June 13th, which was two weeks after the last MBME I took, and I got a 223. So... Like I said, this overshoots, although this made me very hopeful and very happy, and I was seeing that 230, uh, which was about the cut for the 99 when I took my exam. I was I was like, oh my God, I'm so close to the 230. I was so happy. But like I said, it overshot me about 10 points. And then on the 20th of June, which was a week after that U World uh, Self-Assessment 2, I took NBME 7, and I took the free 150. Um, the NBME 7 is, I would say, the most predictable NBME, although all of them were right on for me. So, and I took these two, the NBME 7 and the free 150 questions, because I did a mock exam day. Uh... The MBME 7 is four blocks, and the free 150 is three blocks. So it was seven blocks, and I did it just like if I was the day of the exam. I timed myself. I did everything. So I would say that everyone should do this. The I got on the MBME 7, I got a 210. And on the free 150, which is super easy, I got 79% correct so this exam the MBME this mock day that I did uh, mock exam day I did it one week before leaving to Miami to take my test I studied here in Costa Rica and then went and took my exam in Miami so I left to Miami on the 28th um, of June and I took my exam July 1st so uh, I think you should leave MBME 7, just because they say it's the most predictable. I think you should leave MBME 7 for about a week before your exam. So you really know what you're going to get on the exam. Because, I mean, I got a 210 on my MBME 7, and I got a 213 um, on my real exam. So it's dead on, you know, plus minus 5 points. And what... Although I do feel that I made a lot of mistakes on my exam, just overlooking, but I think the MBMEs take that into account and they really do um, come very, very close to your actual score on the exam. So don't be afraid to take them. Take them. You need to know what you're going to get. You cannot go blind to your USMLE. So in conclusion, um, I want to say that the UWorld self-assessments are much easier than um, the actual exam because like I said it has repeated questions and images uh, so just know that if you've taken the uh, question bank the USMLE world question bank uh, then you will it will overshoot your score about 10 points the NBMEs are right on dead on with your score 
take them all. I didn't have the time uh, to take them all just because I took too long watching the Kaplan videos and everything like I've said in my other videos, but you should take them all. You should take all your MBMEs. Not only because it's preparing you for the exam, you should check them too, by the way. You should go over them and see the mistakes you made. Uh, and I want to say that the MBMEs are trickier. The way that they ask the question is trickier than the actual exam. Their questions are, sometimes you have to think about it too much. I didn't have a lot of time left over. Uh, and when I was taking the MBMEs, the assessments, and on the actual exam day, the questions were much more straightforward. And I had a lot of time left over at the end of every block. I also want to say, although I cannot talk about any questions on the exam, the images that are in the NBME uh, assessments are the same images that are on exam day. So I had, I want to say, three or four images that were exactly the same images. Now, the questions were not the same as the NBMEs, but the images were, and they were asking about the same subject. So I don't know. Let me give you an example. I am not talking about my exam, but let's say there was a picture on lupus. So uh, let's say in the MBME, the picture was the typical malar rash, and they ask you um, what the diagnosis is, and on the exam, they can ask you instead of diagnosis, then they'll ask you... Uh, I don't know, the cells involved, or what type of hypersensitivity it is. You know, something like that. But you know how the exam is, well, you don't know, but on the exam, they don't tell you the diagnosis. So in the picture, if you already know the diagnosis because you already saw the question in an NBME and you already know that it's lupus, um, then when they ask you it again, you'll get that point. I would say there are ex like three questions or so that are for that I got right that I maybe would have gotten wrong uh, that I got wrong in the assessment but got right on exam day because of the MBME so do them all. And my other tip would be to do one mock exam like I did. You need to know what it feels like uh, to do seven blocks in a row. You really do need to know how to do them. I would say that I did the mock exam with the free 150 questions that uh, USMLE, or I think it's the MBME website, gives for free. Uh, it's the, also the free 150 is the same ones that you can take at the testing center um, like a couple of days before they let you go and um, do that for a charge. I, I wouldn't pay for it to do it. At the place unless you want to go see what it looks like and but I would say that doing a mock exam day is very important because you you do really need to feel the exhaustion and that's it uh, my last tip is do not do them offline I've said this a couple of times but do not do them offline that you're cheating yourself you're you know you really need these uh, assessment tools to let you know how you're doing. So that's it. And my next video will be on, I think my next video is on extras that I used, extra little um, tools that I used to help me prepare for the exam. So that's going to be it. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Facebook and I will see you guys next time. Bye.